This is Creality's second 3D printer in their K2 lineup. This is the K2 Pro. And for a lot of people out there, this might just be the right 3D printer for you. We're gonna be comparing this to the larger K2 Plus and why this might be the right size for most people out there. So first off, let's cover the specs of this 3D printer. It's got a build volume of 300 millimeters in every dimension, X, Y, and Z. 300 millimeters is that perfect size to be able to print out fully sized helmets in one print. You can do a lot of batch processing on this side, throwing a bunch of prints on there at the same time, setting print, walking away for a day, and then coming back to a bed full of finished prints. But at the same time, it's not too large of a 3D printer. You can still move this one around. It is a really nice and premium feeling 3D printer. It's got a glass front panel, glass top panel. It is a plastic panels on the sides with a metal panel on the back. And then everything else is these cast aluminum parts that feel really good. And I really like the styling up here. It just feels like a nice and evolved version of what the K1 printers were. And while you can use this printer standalone, you can connect up to four CFS units to have 16 different spools available from this printer. Let's spin this table around so I can show you how to connect these units together. The trick is to connect them all in series from this port down here all the way up to the base hub up here. So first I have it connected over to the first CFS unit down here and the ports on the back of the CFSs are reversible. Either one works. Basically you think of it as coming out, the data and power comes out of the unit over to the first unit and in one port and out the next one. I then have it going out to this next one up here, in one port, out the next port and going over and back into the base hub because currently I only have two of these printers connected up there. Then with these Bowden tubes connecting from the port here to any of these four ports on the back. It's really nice that it's convenient and it uses these auto sensors to know which filament is going where and the four ports are pretty equivalent. So initially all of these CFS devices, they have zero as their, I guess, ID number. Currently scanning across because the printer is booting up and detecting what devices are connected to it currently. And there we go. Now they're all given their, I guess, ID number. This is unit one, two, three, and then four. I do really like these 3D printed CFS stands. I will link the STL in the description down below. They do use metal drawer sliders, so they're really smooth. But you can open up the bottom spool here, add in filaments. It will take longer to load filaments depending on how long the Bowden tube is from this CFS unit all the way over to your printer. So when you have four CFS units connected, you're going to have some of these with a bit longer of a Bowden tube. So this one does take a while to load all four filaments in. While these units don't have their own internal dehumidifier, I do really like that right on the front here, it gives you the temperature and relative humidity inside of the box. A relative humidity of about 50 is pretty normal for an internal room. So these do have desiccant packets, so they are a little bit below normal in there. If these numbers get really high, something like 70, then it's time to take these filament out, put them in a dehumidifier, like something like the Space Pi 2. And then inside of the printer, we can see all of the filaments down here. Device number one, these are the filaments in there. Number two, and how much is in each one. Number three is actually fully empty. And number four, it knows that there is filament in there, but it doesn't know which is which. Some of these are RFID tag spools, so I can just tell it to auto detect. All of these spools have RFID tags, except for this last one here. So to manually put it in, you can select the brand. It is Creality, and then filaments here. We have a bunch to choose from. This is ASA, HP ASA in the color black. It uses all the default settings select OK, and now it's loaded in there. I really like the UI on here, how it adapts to how many CFS units you have connected. It doesn't show four unless you have all four connected. I really like how Creality has stuck with and refined their UI all the way from the K1 printer. This is a very similar screen, but a lot of minor tweaks makes it really usable, really easy to navigate around, and a lot of controls it gives you directly on here. You can adjust your print settings, so many things you can adjust calibrations. And while it does give you a lot of information on the screen, it never feels busy or crowded. There's never any issues where text runs off the side of the screen. Here we can select any of the filaments to be used on this print. Here when we have the two printers side by side, it makes the K2 Pro look very small. It's not a small printer. The K2 Plus is just a very large 3D printer. 300 millimeters in every dimension on the Pro, 350 millimeters in every dimension on the K2 Plus. 
a lot of similarities between these printers, with the biggest difference mainly being that build size. And with that build size comes a bit of a downside on the larger printer. 23.7 kilograms, 32 kilograms. Here's the total dimensions on the K2 Pro, and here's the total dimensions on the K2 Plus. So yes, you get a vastly larger build volume, but you also have a larger printer. For a lot of people, that's a lot to manage. Moving the Plus around is really difficult to do, versus the Pro becomes way more manageable for a lot more people. Now let's do a deep dive of the similarities and differences between these printers. They both use the same extruder and hot end. They both use the same unicorn nozzle. They both have the same AI camera next to the nozzle for calibration. And they both have the same chamber camera, the same processor, so time lapses should come out the same on both of these printers. The K2 Plus has one chamber heater in the middle with two filtered exhaust fans. While the K2 Pro also has a chamber heater, it only has one filtered exhaust port. The K2 Plus has dual auxiliary part cooling, one on each side of the chamber, while the K2 Pro only has one auxiliary part fan on the left side of the chamber. They both have ethernet ports on the back for physical connection up to a network. Both feature physical RFID sensors, great for spools you're gonna be loading on the side spool holder. I do really appreciate that Creality has made both of these printers so similar. You're not getting a lesser printer on the K2 Pro, you're just getting a smaller printer. For a lot of people that don't need or can't manage this much printer, it prints just as well and has almost all of the same features as the larger K2 Plus. And all of the added features of the K2 Plus aren't really performance, it's just because you need them because the printer's so large. Having the dual auxiliary fans, it's because the print bed is so much bigger. Having two filtered exhaust ports, because the chamber is so much larger, to cool it off you need double the fans. And this one has more motors just because it's a larger bed that it's moving up and down. This one doesn't need that many motors, it's not a lesser printer. And I do really like that, especially at a cheaper price point, that'll be better for a lot of people. Next up we're going to go through the process of changing the nozzles on this printer. First up you need to set the hot end to 200 Celsius. Next up on the actual hot end we can remove this cover, just pull up from the bottom, and the nozzle is exposed down here. The printer does come with this nice tool, so when it gets up to temperature you can just put it on here and unscrew this nozzle. Next we take one of our new nozzles, I'm going to be using this Obsidian X nozzle, a collaboration between Creality, E3D, and Bontech. It comes with a little packet of thermal grease. You want thermal grease to go on this little section here. This will make the nozzle heat up better. Then you can take the nozzle and start it by hand, threading up in there. It will heat up very quickly, but it's easier to start with your hand. These nozzles are the same nozzles that work between the K2 Plus, the K2 Pro, and also the Creality High, but it is a different unicorn nozzle than the one they used on the K1C. Just screw until it's nice and secure, and that should be good to go. Now let's talk about the things that I printed on this machine. Here I left a lot of supports still on these prints to show off how well they break off. These organic supports work really well to hold up little objects like this, but they do release pretty easily. The one print defect I did find in a lot of prints is these light and wispy, almost cobweb looking bits but they're really thin and fine, and you just run your finger across it and that takes it off. It doesn't leave any surface marring on the actual print, but it was just kind of weird that I was noticing it. But then after I changed nozzles, I didn't see that wispiness anymore. Here's an example of two benchies. The one on the left is the pre-sliced speed benchy using the default nozzle, and you can see a bit of that wispiness in there, versus the one on the right is nearly flawless. This is a classic line on a benchy because of the layer time change that happens right here. But other than that, this is such a good looking, nearly perfect benchy. It just looks so good. I've never been just able to so clearly read the back of the boat where it says hashtag 3D benchy like that. There is a seam that's running right there and that's unfortunate for the sake of reading 3D benchy. But other than that, it just looks so good. The perfect first layer on the bottom there. If you want to learn more about 3D printing, check out my podcast called The Perfect First Layer that I co-host with Jerry from The Print House and Guy from Guy's Shop. You can find it anywhere that podcasts are found. After running all of the calibrations, this is just such a good looking benchy. 
All of these prints just turned out so well, even when I loaded up the print surface with it. I really like these traffic cones as a great way of using this CFS as a multicolor printer without wasting too much filament. It only needs to poop out filament when it changes colors. So for this print, it really only changed one, two, three, four times for this entire print. It's a cute little traffic cone for small RC cars. Next up, I did print a lot of multi-board parts. This is a great way of testing tolerances on these printers to see if things fit together correctly. All of these parts fit together really well without being too loose or too tight. Next, I did some testing of some more difficult filaments. This pink is a flexible TPU. This is a really great test for TPUs because it does have to make these sharp corners in here. It is really difficult with soft TPUs to get nice sharp corners on the inside here, and this small print can be done in only 10 minutes. It's nice and strong to show there's no layer separation here. This printed TPU really well. I would recommend to anyone else, and something I'm gonna do in future TPU prints, is put some glue stick down on the build plate to help the part come off. This was really difficult to remove from the PEI build plate. Luckily, I didn't damage it, but I was definitely worried I was gonna damage either this part or the build plate when I was pulling it off. Next up, I did some ASA prints. I typically don't print very much ABS or ASA. I just mostly use PLAs because they come in really fun colors. But this printer is enclosed with a chamber heater, so these ASA prints turned out great. These are printed almost fully solid, and they are so strong. But even with such small surface area on the bottom here, there was no warping at all, and they stuck to the build plate really well. And this is the full 300 millimeters tall, printed a vase mode print in the full height. This is still a really big printer. When always comparing it to the K2 Plus, it does feel like a lot smaller of a printer, but this still is in that category of being a large 300 millimeter printer. So overall, I have been really impressed with this 3D printer. It's just a really great all-arounder. Since it is fully enclosed with a chamber heater, printing high temperature ABS and ASA is really easy. It did great at TPU. With a CFS unit, you're able to print multicolor prints. The one place where this printer isn't the greatest out there right now is for a dedicated full multicolor 3D printer. Since the Snapmaker U1 has been out and I have tested that one out, it does produce full color 3D prints without producing a bunch of waste material. This printer is still great at doing layer changes automatically like this. A print like this cone only produces four different changes in filament, which is only four little poops, because that printer really does excel at full four color 3D printing. This printer though could be expanded all the way up to 16 colors and is really good at everything else, as well as being a really large printer. I am really impressed that Creality decided to put all of their flagship features from the K2 Plus into the K2 Pro here at a cheaper price point, just in a smaller printer. So if you're deciding between the two and you don't have the space or the budget for the larger K2 Plus, this you're not really missing out on anything. You're still getting a really large printer. And when it comes to the final price point, they have announced what it will be launching at. It's currently listed at $1,050 for the combo. That's the printer with one CFS unit. And currently for the first couple days of it launching, they will have a couple added goodies and bonuses in there. I will have some affiliate links in the description down below. Those really help the channel out at no additional cost to yourself if you are thinking about picking one up. As always, if there is anything I missed on this printer or any more questions you may have, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. I will be posting more shorts about this printer in the next coming days and weeks. So if you do have any more questions, subscribe so you don't miss any of those shorts. As always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.